Yeah, I want to start off with something a little different. But I'm sure you've read the title and see today I'm speaking about, in a sense, Tyree Nichols and the Tyree Nichols plight. Dictionary.com defines plight as a condition, state, or situation, especially an unfavorable or unfortunate one. So why would I use that in this context? Well, I'm going to be easy because I'm going to get a little deeper into that right now. Detective Daniel Hersel. He was found guilty of two counts of RICO um, conspiracy, RICO aiding and abetting, and RICO and robbery. Detective Marcus Taylor. He was found guilty of two counts of RICO conspiracy, RICO aiding and abetting, RICO and robbery. Sergeant Thomas Allers pled guilty to RICO conspiracy. Sergeant Wayne Jenkins. Now, I want you to actually kind of get a little gravitas behind that name because I want you to remember that one because that one I'm going to come back to. But Sergeant Wayne Jenkins, convicted of RICO, two counts of robbery, one count destruction, alteration, for falsification of records in a federal investigation, four counts of deprivation of rights under color of law. Detective Momodu Bendiva Kento Dandu, Rico and Conspiracy, and the intent to distribute 100 grams or more of heroin. Detective Evadio Hendricks. Rico Conspiracy. Detective Jamel Rayan, Rico Conspiracy. Detective Maurice Ward, Rico Conspiracy. Officer Eric Snell. He actually pled guilty during trial for distribution of heroin and cocaine. Now, why? What was the point? What was the point of all that? Well, there was a series called We Own the City, and it was distributed by HBO. Now, the context of this city or this show, series, whatever, was to highlight the Baltimore Police Department Task Force. Specifically, the actual name was GTTF, or the Gun Trace Task Force. Now... This task force was put together to take guns off the street and to actually lower the violent crime rate. Say that one more time. This particular task force that consisted of Detective Daryl Hernsell, Detective Marcus Taylor, Sergeant Thomas Eilers, Sergeant Wayne Jenkins, Detective Momodu. Detective Evadio, Detective Jermail uh, Rayan, Detective Maurice Ward, and Officer Snail. Detectives, sergeants. You know, because it goes to the point where oftentimes you hear people, well, I need a sergeant on the scene. They have no idea why they're asking for this sergeant. But the context is, the reasoning is because the officer isn't smart enough to know that they're doing something wrong because they weren't trained properly. The sergeant is supposed to know what can and can't happen. The sergeant is the one that's supposed to be able to tell you what is being effective. The sergeant is supposed to be the voice of reason. The sergeant in this case was one of the most corrupt. 
and that's Wayne Jenkins. Wayne Jenkins, out of all nine, because they actually say eight, it's nine officers for the Gun Trace Task Force, but Wayne Jenkins had the most extensive record. He was found with the most charges, but he was also supposed to be the superior officer, the one that keeps everyone else out of trouble, the one that is responsible for their training. So understand, you might want to keep Wayne Jenkins in mind before you ask for an officer or a sergeant to come to the scene, because that also allows them to extend the stop. I'll get into that later, but I want, I'm doing this for a point. Because for three years, this task force carried out a campaign of robbery and extortion. For three years, this particular task force carried out a campaign of robbery and extortion. The police. This police task force, the police carried out a campaign of robbery and extortion. I know that actually goes against your better judgment because, again, it goes against the programming that we've been taught that police officers are the good guys. You should trust them. The police task force, armed with the fiduciary duty to rid the city of violent crime and illegal weapons, pocketed hundreds of thousands of dollars off the backs of the citizens of Baltimore. This task force also sold drugs. The police were the drug dealers. The police were the drug dealers. Now, just imagine that. The police were the drug dealers in a high minority area. Whoops. Because, again, when we talk about these numbers and how they're skewed, and when people say, well, that wasn't them, that was police doing that. Probably don't remember that story from... You know, seeing the police officers with the bricks and all that other stuff during the Minnesota uh, riots. But we'll get back into that because, again, we're talking about a police task force that was tasked with ridding the city of guns and violent crime. And they were the ones dealing drugs. They were the ones with a campaign. They were the ones extorting. They were the ones robbing. The police. Keep that in mind. Scarface even said in one of the songs, he lived in a place where the police commit more crimes than the criminals. And he didn't live in Baltimore. But when we hear these things, we actually told to actually go against that. We, we, we don't, we don't want to go in. We don't want to indulge in it. It's because it's just a few. But I actually gave you a podcast a little while ago where I talked about 308, I believe, Minnesota police officers retiring. 296 of them were bad cops because it's only a few, right? Out of 308, 296 of them were bad cops. Out of 308, 296 of them were bad cops. But it's only a few. But here's the thing. I want, I want to give you another one because, again, we, we they glorified the eight. The eight of a corrupt Baltimore task force. But always remember... They're being incentivized to do this. When I talk about quotas, everybody thought I was crazy. Oh, you're just saying stuff. Police don't have quotas. Just because they don't call them a quota doesn't mean they don't have them. But when Trevor Noah actually brought up the police having quotas, all of a sudden those that were saying that I didn't know what I was talking about, they grew silent. 
Why is that? But the corruption don't start at officers because you look at this list. There was only one officer. It was eight supervisors. Let that sink in. One officer, eight supervisors that were on a task force that was dealing drugs, cocaine and heroin, that was robbing and extorting people. The police. But we have another sergeant, Sergeant Keith Allen Gladstone. He actually went to federal prison because <laughs> Sergeant Wayne Jenkins ran over an alleged suspect, which actually, if you have an opportunity, or if you go to F Movies, fmovies.io, I believe it is, go and watch We Own the City because it shows this scene where he created a situation in his mind. He then started chasing this guy. And in the midst of chasing this guy, he hit someone else. So to kind of cover up his ish, he tells Sergeant Keith Allen Gladstone, hey, bring me a gun so we can plant on them because I can't find anything. Bring me a gun so I could plant on him because I can't find anything. So he had no lawful reason to be behind this young man, had no lawful reason to be doing anything or engaging with this man. But because he had done something wrong and had ran him over, he now asked for other cops to participate and his illegal activity, and then created a guilty person out of an innocent person who was doing no wrong. This is the police. You know, because if you're not committing a crime, they're not going to bother you. I think that's what they, they tell me all the time. Well, 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 you shouldn't be doing anything. All you have to do is just cooperate and it's only a few. And it's amazing how at no point in any of this were the officers asked to change their behavior. We're always asked as the one that's supposed to be served to do something different, to make their job easier, yet they are not doing things to actually allow for an easier job to be had. Why is that? That same officer, Wayne Jenkins, prior to even going to Baltimore, had four lawsuits for misconduct. So they knew when they hired him, he was a financial problem. He was a police liability. He was a reason Good cops are killed. They knew that prior to hiring him. He had four lawsuits prior to becoming a Baltimore police officer. Let that sink in. Because you remember I talked about the police union. I talked about the dominoes in this. I talked about the hierarchy. Because I'm talking about a chess strategy whenever I'm speaking about any of this. I want you to understand that. Just, just let it sink in. He was also caught on video planting drugs on a driver at a traffic stop. Wayne Jenkins was caught on video planting drugs on a driver at a traffic stop. You know, this is often a time where people say, well, all you have to do is just cooperate. I even watched a video today, which was amazing. Because everybody came up with an excuse for an officer who illegally stopped someone, who had a fit because that person actually knew the officer's job, 
And then the officer was like, I'm doing you a favor. Even though what I did was illegal, it was immoral and against my oath. I'm doing you a favor by exercising my discretion. You know, the thing that I shouldn't even be participating in. Because the driver knew the officer did something illegal and he refused to participate in the officer's illegal activity. The officer then did him a favor. That was a video I was just I watched. But it's it's astonishing to me. Cause I constantly tell people, one, if you're riding around and you do not have a dash camera or a means of recording or going live already mounted and going when you are pulling over, you are crazy as hell. Because we know 76% and growing of police video never.